Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our um, live webinar. We are going to be walking through um, the future of Microsoft Dynamics, GP and NAV. And our focus here is on talking about how moving and transitioning to Business Central um, can solve a lot of your operational issues um, along with reporting and analytics and insight into data. Okay, so as we run through, we will be running through the presentation as I think John said in the announcements, and then we'll be taking questions at the end. We have a two part presentation where we dive deep into Business Central functionality, and then we're gonna dive deep into JET reporting. So first a little bit about 360 visibility for anybody who's not uh, overly familiar with us, although I believe a lot of you are, so I won't spend too much time here. So we have been around for quite some time. We're coming up onto, I think we just had our 17th anniversary. We are founded in uh, north of Kleinberg and we are a full Microsoft solution provider. So we not only do 365 Business Central, GP, um, and formerly NAV, also CRM SharePoint, and are a cloud solution provider, meaning we also can offer the full stack of Microsoft solutions, including Azure and Office 365. A little bit about our customers. Now, thanks to cloud, they are fairly global, although we are focused mostly on North America and uh, have, of course, a, a, a robust client base in the greater Toronto area. A little bit about our capabilities we just spoke about. So we do, again, have our Office 365 practice, our Business Central practice, Azure, and um, a focus on the entire Microsoft suite. So I think a lot of you are here due to this title right here. Are you outgrowing your accounting system? Um, which is pretty common. It's a painful thing to replace and people generally wait until they really need to go through that process. Some of the reasons people start to really um, look at going through that process is because they have multiple systems. They don't speak to each other. It means that you're duplicating data everywhere manually, quite often back and forth, keying one report into another system. You also often can't get reporting out of the system. Um, you know, a lot of people are living in multiple spreadsheets, um, multiple systems, databases, three or four different reporting tools, things like that. It becomes very ineffective to run your business, as you probably know. Um, a lot of legacy systems also have security issues. So concerns about um, old style servers, um, so, you know, issues with databases that don't have adequate protection. Maybe they also don't have good audit trails or um, the ability to segregate duties and just by, you know, locking people into their role and making sure that, you know, sensitive data is protected. So these are a lot of the common things that we see and I'm sure you've probably experienced some of them yourselves. So why we're here is because of that legacy accounting system, but I'm sure a lot of you really wanna know what's next. Some of you I know are running um, Microsoft products today some of you are running other products, perhaps very specific to your industry, and maybe they don't have a very good uh, accounting backbone. Um, and some of you are running other competitive products that maybe you've definitely outgrown. You're probably hearing lots of things in the marketplace over the years. Cloud is not new anymore, but there's still a lot of mystery about it. A lot of Microsoft clients are wondering what's on the roadmap. Um, they haven't maybe heard anything new about Great Plains or G Dynamics GP as it's now called. They've heard you know, various things about Business Central. It's gone through three or four different names, so there's a lot of confusion there. And what we wanna do is clarify that for you and just really give you a good introduction of what Business Central is, what can it do for you, and why you should be looking at that as your next evolution in your accounting, um, your accounting applications. Okay. So a little background first, a lot of you may know this if you already run Dynamics Nav or formerly Navision. Um, it is the evolution, it's the background of Business Central. Um, at a certain point, Microsoft decided to go to the cloud and what they, the product that they took there was Dynamics NAV. So the evolution started um, probably even before 2016, but what we had happening is we had two distinct pieces of software running. We had your traditional 
um, Dynamics Nav 2016, 2017, and even 2018 being released on a yearly cycle. And at the same time, we had the evolution of what was now called Business Central. At a certain point, they converged, and that happened in spring of 2018. And now going forward, um, fall 2018, they became Dynamics 365 Business Central. So the brand is no longer the name brand is is now Business Central and now we are fully capable in the cloud. So as we move forward with the roadmap for Business Central, a little more um, sort of background on what what happened in terms of cloud and on premise and some of the tools became more and more integrated. So now things are seamlessly integrated between um, with business intelligence tools, the Office 365 stack, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Going forward now, in the last couple of years, they have moved into a cycle of two major releases a year. So we have a spring and a fall release. We just have gone through our 2020 wave one, as it's been called, and a lot of you may have seen some of the marketing um, and things on that and the changes. So cloud evolution is quicker. Um, we're seeing, which is great, because that means you get new features to your fingertips very fast. And Microsoft also is committed to a monthly update of minor functionality and things um, as it goes. It's all seamless to you. It happens. You do have control over the major releases. Um, and that is one of the beauties of, of moving to the cloud that we're going to talk about. So going forward, we don't have a lot of details um, to share with yet into 2022 and 21. Um, however, they are continually adding functionality and tighter integration to the entire um, ecospace of Microsoft products. Okay. So why cloud? This is probably not new news to anybody, but I thought we should just take a moment to look at why you'd want to move to Business Central, which is a cloud-based product. Um, so as I've been talking about, one of the major reasons we're seeing and one of the biggest um, efficiencies you gain is that complete um, access to all of the Microsoft stack. Some are already completely integrated. They're all meant to work together in one form or fashion. Um, you have Office 365 that um, Microsoft has fully, you know, you want to send a quote, you want to send an email, you want to PDF something. It's all seamless from Business Central. Um, you can even do things within Outlook. Um, in terms of you can start a process in Outlook, you can sometimes start processes in other applications such as sales and have it integrate. The platform is what we call the a common data model, so you'll see some of that uh, um, here in this little infograph. Um, we also have a complete integration with the Power Automate um, platform. So, and I could have that name wrong, it does change, but things like Flow, if you've heard of that, or Power Apps, uh, Power BI. So these are these are other pieces of um, Microsoft technology that is meant to connect everything together and make your jobs a lot easier when you're in the cloud. So that gives you that end to end um, sort of look with real time data, business analytics. It gives you that um, power. There is also a lot of work done on the artificial intelligence and the predictive insights and that sort of software that's also running by Microsoft and they have embedded some of that um, inside Business Central as well. So you can start to see trends and create forecasts and things like that. Um, there's a lot of productivity advancement as well in, in workflows and processes. Um, the other thing that's very powerful in terms of a cloud product is your upgrade cycle now looks completely different than it did in the past. Uh, On-premise software is expensive to upgrade. It, people don't upgrade frequently because of that. It takes, you know, an, it's an entire project unto itself, as many of you have probably gone through. Um, some of you have gone through that with us. From a cloud perspective, Microsoft's core product is upgraded, as I said, twice a year um, with a major update, which you can schedule and test in a sandbox and then determine when the right time for you is to apply that. That is at no cost to you um, additionally. Okay, so real savings and ongoing costs, not to mention your server savings, your license savings, your energy savings um, from not having that traditional server room. Okay, so what is um, Business Central basically? Um, we're going to get into that. Uh, it's basically a way to connect your business, make smarter decisions, and really give you a platform that you can grow from and transition 
um, other products into and expand as you grow as a business. Okay. So right now everyone has probably a lot of tools to get their work done. Um, so connecting your business becomes very important. It's very inefficient if you need to go to five, 10, whatever that number of apps is that are unconnected in order for you to, to work. Business Central wants to bring that together into a comprehensive solution. So a little high level um, of the major areas of Business Central, and this isn't even depicting what you could connect to with third party applications. So we have you know, your, your core operations management. So whether you're in manufacturing, distribution, um, financial services, that kind of thing, you have your core operations that are gonna be handled with various modules like purchasing, inventory, receivables and so on. Um, we also have project management. So for those of you that want to track jobs, um, may want to track projects, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's also those capabilities. The fin financial management system is what everybody expects in an accounting application. You've got your general ledger, your bank rack, your um, multi-currency, fixed assets and so on. Then we have sales orders, service management, so you can have your sales process. You can even do fundamental CRM opportunity tracking. And then, of course, I already spoke about supply chain management. And then we have reporting and analytics. Um, reporting and analytics is uh, out of the box with some things. And of course, there are great tools to attach um, that seamlessly integrate with Business Central to give you more powerful tools. And that's where we're going to talk a little bit about jet reports at the second half of this presentation. So a bit more detail here on all the various management um, tools available. So all the modules and the different processes that would happen within each um, section. We won't go into too much detail here. Okay. So another real key thing about connecting your business and your stakeholders and your employees is uh, Business Central as a cloud product lets you work with the tools that you want to work with and wherever you want to work. So whether it be a desktop or a tablet, a phone, and that phone could be, you know, I, Apple or can be Android, Business Central is accessible on all of it. And I would say Microsoft has really excelled at ensuring that the UI and the, the user experience here is very, um, very good. They really focused on how to present data in the right format on the different devices. Okay. Also keeping you in touch and connected is getting to work with the tools that you know, so the applications that you already use. Um, very powerful story is being able to be remotely uh, you know, at a site or at a prospect or, you know, at another office location and being able to use your tablet or phone and Outlook and all the tools you want and they're seamlessly integrated. You can create quotes and orders even from Outlook if you like. Um, so if you're more of a remote sales um, person or having to do something on your phone while you're traveling, quite easy to do. You can access data with Excel. So again, that perfect, uh, that seamless integration with Office 365. You can push things to Excel. You can even edit in Excel and have that update back into Business Central depending on what the, uh, what the data is. You can also customize uh, things with Word templates and so on. So just ensuring that all the tools that you use day to day are integrated and work together. Um, streamlining business processes is also quite uh, simple. So we talked a little bit about flow. I'm not sure if everybody's heard of it, but it is a very easy to use interface to create basic workflows. Um, business Central does contain a number of workflows out of the box that you simply click a button and they're turned on. So things like approving a vendor, approving an invoice, um, sending a customer credit, um, change of credit uh, for approval is also possible, things like this. Any journal that you want to enter, you could segregate duties and have somebody separately approve it, then who entered it and then who posted it. So all of these things are available to secure your business and improve productivity. Okay. So making smarter decisions, that's 
you know, kind of a goal of everybody when they, they go to work every day is how can I make the best decision possible? And Business Central is um, there to help provide you information so that you have what you need um, on hand in terms of information in order to make decisions and, and do your work. So getting an end to end overview of your business has never been simpler. Uh, data is completely centralized in terms of all those modules we looked at, sales, service, uh, financial information, projects and so on. Also using some of the dashboarding capabilities and um, also the productive predictive insights and so on can help give you more information so that you can make decisions accordingly. Certain things like reading, understanding when your inventory is running low based on the sales orders you might have in the system or looking at um, when you may need to pay things proactively or <laughs> collect on things proactively. So understanding your day's sales outstanding and those types of metrics can be presented quite easily so that you can optimize um, your data and make decisions. Okay. Um, empowering you to grow and to you know take on exactly what you need in Business Central, but know that you have the capabilities to expand further. A lot of people have outgrown their software as we talked about at the beginning, and one of the things you want to make sure is that whatever software you're now transitioning to has that capability to meet your needs today, but also to meet your needs into the future, which is you know critically important. You have to have that vision of where you want to go, how you want to grow, and maybe not everything is necessary day one to turn on in Business Central, but you can expand it. Okay, You can also tailor um, the experience with Business Central, and there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, right out of the box, you can drag and drop things. You can arrange screens. Um, you can really you know, hide fields, move things around, do that sort of stuff without creating a customization per se and you can enable users to do this themselves and to sort of modify their screen so they can work more effectively. You also can extend the functionality of Business Central with outside applications so you can um, look at very specific add-on products in Microsoft's App Source, for example. 360 has a several published apps there, for example. We've extended to add check signing capabilities and dollar threshold approvals and things like EFT for, Can for Canadian banks. So you can work with your partner also to create something that's specific to you. So perhaps you and your partner have looked and you don't see or we have looked with you and don't see something that meets a critical business need for you. We still have the capability as Microsoft partners to create what's called an extension, which sits outside of your upgrade path and interacts with Business Central, but is seamless to you because when you're in Business Central, you're accessing that. And we can um, extend the functionality to do whatever it is that you need to do. Okay, you can also extend further with um, the Power App series, the Power Platform series. So again, if you wanted to create something um, very interesting in terms of maybe a timesheet that you want to integrate um, or some sort of notification workflow that happens that wasn't out of the box with Flow. You can do these things and extend the functionality um, outside of Business Central, but having it being triggered by Business Central. Okay. Um, and then we just covered this a little bit about it, talking about the, the industry extension. So we have a little screenshot of AppSource here in terms of what you're looking for. You simply can, for example, go to AppSource, take a look for 360 visibility, and you'll, you'll find our apps. These apps here that are published, we go through a vigorous process to put them up here. It's, uh, it's Microsoft's new version of certification. Everything needs to go through their standards, be tested, and we are committed then that this app will work with each new release cycle that Microsoft releases. Okay. So really with uh, Business Central, you're ready for growth. You can grow at your own pace. Um, as I said, you can turn modules, you know, you can um, add on modules like fixed assets or service in the future. You don't need to start with them right away, but knowing that you have the ability to grow once you're um, once you're on the platform. A couple um, quotes from our a few clients. Um, 
some of these clients, I've got two here that just wanted to share. I'll let you read those off yourselves, but just a little background. Um, this is a long-term client, Savage Arms Canada. They had been running GP for years and wanted to modernize their systems and wanted to transition into something that would see them through the long term and uh, our transition to Business Central. Another quick quote from a customer who we have helped over the years to transition from NAV, on, so Dynamics NAV on premise, I believe they were on 2013 or 2015. They were behind anyway, and it was time for an upgrade. And so it made sense, especially as a not for profit, to look for that efficiency, that cost savings. Um, and they wanted to eliminate, you know, IT support for a server and SQL licensing and all those types of things. So it really made sense for them to transition to um, Business Central and, uh, and adopt the cloud. And they have been running now for several years quite happily and continue to work with us on new endeavors as they expand their use. So now we're going to take a, a little closer look at some processes in Business Central. I'm going to walk through um, just a few things just so you get the look and feel and, and see a little bit about some of those features that we just spoke about. So I'm going to dive into another PowerPoint here and I'm going to cross my fingers that the process is seamless. Okay. So we talked a little bit about approvals and um, I'm going to show you what that kind of looks like. This uh, customer approval process is uh, a cost is one that's in Business Central. It takes no customization, although you could tweak it with configuration. And this one is going to show us how somebody can request that a new customer can be created, how that notifications can flow, what it might look like in Outlook and so on, which can be tweaked as well and then walk through that process. So this gives you that control over people adding new customers, segregates the duties, and also can even put some controls around things like credit limit checking and, and so on with new customers. Okay, so could be an outside sales rep, creates a customer, an administrator approves that, including the credit terms like we just spoke about, the person who submitted the customer for approval gets a confirmation and then using flow we can also onboard our customer and send them a little welcome email. Okay. So we're going to create the new customer first. Um, so you're getting a quick look of the one of the screens. Business Central also has role based screens. So depending on what role you're playing, um, you may see a slightly different screen. So I'm going to click new customer. We're going to enter the name. So this is a typical customer card, your you know, typical information of address, credit, um, credit limit and email. We're not gonna bother with addresses and so on. And you'll see that there is a send for approval request. Now, if this is turned on, that's because you've turned on the workflow. So what'll happen is that we'll now send an email out um, to the person that needs to approve it. They can approve it on their phone or they can approve it from their Outlook or they could if they wanted to and they were in Business Central just go into Business Central and see the approval. We're going to go into Outlook and you'll see this is an example of something powered by Flow. We click approve. We have all the relevant information. We have a link back to go in if we want to go in and actually view more details and we can click approve. Okay, and we'll send that back off. So the sales, rece sales rep receives the notification, so they'll also get a little um, note that says that they it's been approved and perhaps they want to go and send something else out via Teams. So this is leaving Business Central, um, just going out and perhaps giving them the update to the, the, the team that will now, outside of Business Central, go and send them a welcome email, for example. Okay, and then your customer has now been sent a welcome email. Okay, so very seamless, very quick to do, and you have a customer set up without too many emails back and forth or pieces of paper floating around, and you can extend that onboarding process with the other Microsoft tools to um, perform more things uh, in terms of onboarding the customer. Okay. 
Okay. So now I'm going to walk through um, entering a sales order from a mobile device. Okay, so we have our customer created. We're going to enter a sales order. We're going to post the sales order, send that to a customer, and even check the balance all from a mobile device. So there's an emulator screen I'll walk through. Um, just to give you an idea of, yeah, a lot of people maybe not uh, will not be working on their phone, but perhaps a tablet. And depending on how remote and you know workforces today are even more and more remote, remote um, they may find this very easy to do after having had a meeting with someone and want to get that off before they hit the road again or or go home. So this is what the mobile interface can look like. So again, this is role tailored. So depending on what role you're playing, this can change. So if I want to go in and say new, um, I'm in a sales order type role. I can say uh, sales order. Sales order screen comes up for any of you that have had any familiarity with NAV or, or Business Central before. This is really just the, the sort of the header that you're being presented with. So you would need to enter a customer name or pick one. So you can enter it or you can look it up. You can um, look at the lines now that you've um, entered that. And we want to be able to enter, you know, multiple items perhaps. So we can show a list of items. We can do a lookup and find our items. Right now I have the view turned on with the pictures. This is optional. And I want to pick the table. I need to go next so I can enter invoice details. Once I'm happy with the invoice, you can post and send right from the remote device. Okay, you can send it to PDF. And I can decide that I'm going to invoice it right away. Okay, so it'll bring up and this will happen no matter what kind of client you're in, whether it's on your desktop or your mobile. When you print and send, you are seeing that integration to Office 365. And it's now going to send out a copy of the invoice attached to the contact that was on your customer. Okay. So that is now sent. If I want to then go and see what that balance looks like on a customer, I can do that. I can just pick the existing customer and you'll see that they have a balance listed here. Uh, I can drill into this detail and list out. There's only the one um, order that we just processed. Um, if there was multiples, you would see that. So that was a very quick turnaround. So that will really increase time spent on entering orders, invoices, and of course will shorten the ultimate um, cash in the door by doing that. Okay. So we want to make sure we've kind of touched on sales a little bit. We've looked at the remote connectivity. Um, so let's take a little quick view of purchasing for anybody that's on the payables team out there joining us. So purchasing hasn't really changed a ton over the years, but just to give you an idea of how you know purchase enter a purchase invoice can be entered, how you can look at the balance and so on. We'll just quickly walk through that. You can turn on approval processes in this as well. So if you wanted to enter the invoice, send it for approval and also put um, an approval on the payment that is also possible, but we don't walk through that here. Okay. So we're going to create the purchase invoice. We're going to select the vendor. We're going to, from the vendor card, we can then opt to create a document directly. So the vendor card is showing us various information. So we always have what we call a fact box sitting out here that you can hide or show. Um, it also will provide you with um, information. Again, anything that we see is is blue is drillable, so you can drill into the details, get to the balance and so on. You can also see a history of what has been purchased, how many invoices and so on. So from the vendor card, if everything looks good here, we can directly just say, yeah, we want to create an invoice for this vendor. And there's other ways to get to this invoice screen as well. So the first thing we want is it's already auto filled in our vendor information because we came from the vendor card. We can then create our vendor invoice and be entering um, the date, what it is that we want to purchase, how many we want to purchase. Um, we're going to assume that this price is correct. It's coming directly from the item card because this is inventory that we're entering. You could also enter a GL account if you're making a purchase for a service or 
something that um, was not inventory or if you don't run inventory at all. If we're happy with this and the tax calculations and so on, we can just click post. It'll say, are you sure? Nice little check. Yes, I'm sure I want to post. And then you can even print out um, the documentation if you like. Okay, so you'll see our balance has changed. If we want to take a look at our balance in this vendor, we can click on that fact box and this will show us our vendor ledger entries. The screen shows in detail each document that's been posted to the vendor. You can see which ones are overdue. So we have this angry red one here. We also can see the description that was entered, the amount and so on. You can drill back into that document from here as well if you wanted to see it. So just so that we can see what we have due here. And then we'll proceed to paying the invoice. So again, we'll go back into payables and we'll go into a payment journal. Payment journals are often already created and we can use uh, existing journals to um, then gather and pay various invoices. So this is the one that we're using for checks. So if I go in and edit the journal, I can grab the exact vendor from the list if I like and enter the amount and I can essentially decide which document I want to pay. So this is sort of adding an invoice manually into the process if I want to do a one off. So once I've selected the invoice, this is essentially now set up to pay and I can post this payment journal and print the check and so on. Okay. So we paid that invoice essentially with a manual payment. So we can go take a look at the vendor history and just see how that has changed. Um, okay, so now we can see the vendor history. We can also see a payment has been processed. So I showed you the manual process of adding a single payment into a journal, which you could do in hand pick and pay, but there's also a process that's more automated that is more likely to be used for a bigger check run and that is using this adjust vendor payments function so if we walk into that basically you can um, i've already pre-populated this you can see uh, the suggest vendor payments will then grab everything that's payable based on your selections so your selections could have been by due date um, usually which is what the most common thing is to do or if you want to pay a specific currency or a specific group of vendors, you can gather all of those in one journal and more automate the process. And again, we could send this for approval at this point if we wanted this batch to be approved um, prior to check printing. And if that approval is turned on, that is your control that you won't be printing that until it is approved. All right, so we'll move on to one more process. It's more of an overview of how the role center can drive information to the right stakeholders. So what we'll do is take a look at the owner perspective. And we're going to go through a few things that actually go outside of Business Central quickly. But really, you know, business owners want to look at the health of their business. They want to be able to see and act proactively on information and maybe want to look at some historical information as well and and really have things at their fingertips in order to manage their business. So in terms of what you can actually see in Business Central, I've just um, there are embedded Power BI pieces within Business Central. So again, that whole combining of the Microsoft stack um, Power BI sits out on its own. You can have your, you know, it's its own product really, but they have created a number of reports that sit inside. You can change them out and there are standard reports built in the library for Business Central as well. So you can take a look at some of the reports um, that are available. And what you can do is um, take a look and see through graphs. There's charts, there's various um, things that are also included in this dashboard view. Um, so again, this is very dependent on the role center here. So we can look at trial balances. We can look at um, various accounts. So perhaps every day the business owner or the department manager wants to come in and be able to quickly see what are my cash accounts sitting at? What are my receivables sitting at? What are my payables sitting at? Um, what's our total revenue and so on. 
Okay. Um, oops, sorry, I went backwards. There's also some activities that get tracked here in what we call queues, um, so that you can easily drill in and see quick facts about key areas of the business. So if we want to see sales for the month as I drill in, I'm now able to see all the transactions that have made up the sales for our month. So I'm able to see all the various invoices and can keep drilling down into specifics here to see what those invoices are and who those customers are. Okay. So trends are also key. So not only just looking at historical data, but also looking at future data. Um, so that's where we're going to leave Business Central temporarily and take a look at some of the Power BI. And we won't go too deeply into these. There's an entire library that does change frequently. Um, so what I can do is take a look at, for example, items by customer, sales by customer, um, various pieces of information that are being presented in a more graphical um, interface. You can also drill in and see um, different pieces of data. So these are just a sampling of some of the CAN dashboards that are out there. Um, we can also take a look at insights. So again, we talked a little bit about the intelligence gathering that goes on with uh, Microsoft and some of that um, can capture and give you some more information. This is uh, a lot of this is coming from Business Central, but it's also trying to forecast based out on other pieces of information. Okay, so we see balances in accounts, we can see variances, budget to actual, these are different KPIs that have been set up as, a, as more of a dashboard. Okay. And again, just some ideas. So I don't want to get too deep into the weeds in terms of Power BI because our next um, section is going to be around looking at deeper at how business intelligence and analytics are super important to run your business and we're going to be doing that by looking and exploring jet reports and their offerings so jet reports we have ryan on the line with us to take questions at the end uh, we did pre-record his session because we were a little concerned about internet connectivity for him um, so we are going to run through that but rest assured he is here in person on the line with us and will be addressing any questions at the end as will i so i'll hand that over to the jet reports presentation of what we'll be covering today, we certainly want to cover how easy it is to build and create financial reports from scratch uh, with some of the tools that we have set up within Jet Reporting today. Uh, but know that it's not just a financial reporting solution. We can actually tap into every table, field, data set that is located within your Dynamics instance today. So whether that be AP, AR, inventory, uh, we can tap into that information and make it easy for you to report off of. Now, we also want to cover how we support some of those migrations that uh, Microsoft is pushing nowadays where you can go from GP uh, to BC. We want to give you an opportunity to leverage a solution that doesn't allow you or make you maintain that old legacy database. Uh, you can simply just house some of that information within a data warehouse, and that's what we'll kind of speak to within our analytic solution as well. And then we'll also cover a lot of the pre-built content that we deliver into the Dynamics customer base as well. But before we jump into any kind of reporting, I want to introduce everybody to JET. Uh, and really, from a business standpoint, what we've been doing for the better part of 20 years, attached at the hip as a, one of the number one partners for Microsoft, is delivering data access to people. And you can see here that we're supporting over 200,000 business users today, whether that's reporting directly out of the database, or whether that's through that data warehouse or cubes that I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier within our analytics solution. So again, we want to make it easy for business users to get the data that they need. And that's a big difference for us. We focus on the business user allowing them to avoid a lot of those multiple products that sometimes creep into our reporting process when there are multiple users involved. I always like to share this slide here. Uh, we are most certainly a global organization with happy customers all over the world. And you can see here 
that we work within multiple verticals, uh, multiple shapes and sizes of companies. So it really boils down to the fact that our software resonates and is scalable with any organization because of how much we specialize with Microsoft users today. Okay. We're going to start with Jet Reports. And Jet Reports is a direct real-time reporting tool that integrates into Excel that allows business users to dive into their database, extract the information they want, and report against it in Excel. Now, what do I mean by real-time? Uh, is when I hit run, and you guys will see this today while I'm demoing the product, I get the latest information and the data that's residing within the database today. There's no intermediary between those numbers. So if I post a transaction and hit run within any given report, uh, you will see that most recently posted data populate that field in real time within the solution. And this is what saves hundreds of reporting hours for our customers is once you set up and configure a report, it's self-serviceable. Change the parameters, drive real-time data into any given report, eliminate those manual processes and interact with real-time information. Okay. I wanted to cover security as well and know that Jet Reports is controlled and governed. So meaning when a user is interacting with a report, they're restricted by the security parameters that have been set up for them within the Microsoft system security credentials. So if the user typically can't interact with AP data, then they can't visualize it with Jet. So again, we conform to the Microsoft security parameters set up for those individuals. So again, know that Jet, is, Jet Reports is controlled and governed. This is something, the Jet Hub, that has been particularly useful for the dynamic space. It is the centralized location or the single destination for report management. This will sit on your server. You will be able to log in to see all the reports that have been created and shared with you and knowing that these reports are controlled and governed. So again, if I can't see the tables and fields that I'm not supposed to see within an AP report, I can't visualize those just because I'm within Jet Hub and leveraging a Jet product today. Okay, you will see an element of report management, version control, run history, and we will cover all of that today for this webinar. Jet Budgets is next. And this was a tool that was built from the ground up for the Dynamics community based off their entirety of their feedback. So I always mention Jet Budgets as people are looking at reporting tools, because sometimes it's nice to know as you're looking at a reporting solution that down the line, you can start looking at improving your budgeting process. That's a simple add-in, you can plug it in, and you can use a lot of the same functionality that you're going to be using for reporting today within our, within our Jet solution. Kind of jump forward real quickly here before we start diving into any kind of reports. What I want to show you guys pretty briefly here is the reports that we provide out of the box for the Dynamics customer base. So you can see here, it's over 130 plus different reports that you can access. You can download them and you can actually start populating them with your detail or data that's specific to your environment. So upload them and leverage them how you please. Again, this is some great time to value, but you can see here as we continue to navigate through this JET website where you can provide these reports, uh, we provide um, kind of the back end of the data model that it takes to power Power BI. Okay, so we pair really, really well with them. Microsoft spent a lot of time on the front end and we actually developed a back end data model so you can build out these, these dashboards and visual analytics to bring your reports to life. Uh, most of our customers are residing on our analytics solution, and we will cover that towards the end of the presentation today. Okay, so without further ado, what I'd like to do is jump into Jet Reports today, and we're gonna open a brand new worksheet, worksheet just so we can become familiar with what that Jet ribbon looks like. Okay, so going from left to right here as I come into this Jet ribbon, the design feature is going to allow you to build and create reports from scratch. The run button, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, this is going to be your key to refreshing your data and the information with the most recent postings within your database. 
drill down ability, you're going to be able to drill down into that sub ledger, that transactional detail, and interact with some of those invoices to see what makes up any given dollar amount. There are multiple ways where you can build and create reports from scratch, whether it's with general ledger information or whether we're looking to tap into, again, AP, AR, inventory, or just look into those tables and modules in a user-friendly way. Okay. An easy way for you to update or send those reports into the Jet Hub where users can interact with them immediately. We can schedule out reports as well simply from the Jet Ribbon. So schedule out reports to be hitting inboxes on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. If you have multiple data sources that you need to connect to, if NAV or if BC, if GP is not the only database that you're using, Jet can connect to multiple databases. So know that if you have a third party add-on, this is a simple way where you can drop this information down and interact with that database information. Lastly, Jet Corp USA, or just one of the entities that is rolling up my, in my database, know that you can report off of those multiple companies or regional offices that you may want to pull from. Okay, so now we're going to jump into some report creation here, and this is going to be a lot to do with some of the end users and how they're consuming reports today. But what you can see here is you have Jet powering the creation and the refreshing of all of these figures, but Excel is where you're going to be doing all of your formatting. So for this example here, you can do Excel calculations to perform this consolidated number here. Right. And then we have a sum inside of Excel just to recognize that total revenue number. So simple Excel calculations that you can provide on the back end with your Excel knowledge, but know that JET functionality is what's going to be driving that live detail once the report is created. End user consumption is really, really simple. If I'm a user and I'm looking to interact with the most recent detail with any given report that has been shared with me, I simply have to access this run button here. And Jet builds in report options for you. Now, report options for me as an end user is an easy way to start filtering data on how it's relevant to me. So I can go in here, I can change date filters, I can filter by different business, I can have different corporate events, intercompany or sports, or I can simply just make a multi-entity consolidation into one single entity report. I can select run, and I'm interacting with the most recent information that has been shared with me around this report, okay? And then just as quickly as I turn it into a single entity report, I can go back into that report options or run tab, select both of these, and run the report in a consolidated way again. Now, the last piece on report consumption is if I want to start looking to specific numbers here, you can see when I start highlighting over different cells, we have this right hand drop down window or arrow. This is what's going to allow us to drill into this detail, start interacting with some of that sub ledger information, those transactional invoices that make up dollar amounts. So here we can quickly dive into the database and get a good picture of what entry numbers, general ledger accounts are making up a particular invoice. And we can even export this to Excel to continue to, to filter even further off of some of these invoices today. Okay. Now, this is what we call a viewer license, a user who is just going to consume this detail and interact with these reports as they are shared with them. So this is a great way for, for project managers or department heads to filter off of the criteria, criteria that they would like to interact with. But the designer license was made for building and creating reports from scratch. So what I want to do here again is I just want to create a new financial workbook. So I'm going to go back into my JET ribbon. Now, the designer license was really made to empower the end user or the financial professional. The functionality was built around, again, not having to include other departments and potentially lengthen the reporting process. So there's a few different ways we can build out reports from scratch, but the first way I'll show you is with our fast financials tool. And this is by far the easiest way to build out financial reports. So let me jump into fast financials here and you'll see once I've selected that icon, 
that this is really just a breakdown of your general ledger account structure that's going to allow me to report off different names, amounts, budgets, then also some pre-calculated fields on the back end here. You can already see the ease of use is pretty evident here. I don't have to know that account 22,600 relates to taxes and payables, right? So I can continue scrolling down here. Now, if I want to build out a simple revenue report, I simply have to identify the parameters that I would like to work with them. So if I want to include account 40,000 for revenue, and I want to include all of these parameters in between, I can shift click and I can drag and drop into Excel. This is going to give me the initial shell of the report that has jet functionality in the background, and we're going to drive it with some Excel formulas that you are already leveraging today. Now, I can do the same thing for a profit loss report. I can go to cost of goods sold. I can select account 50,000. And if I want to continue using all the parameters in between that first item or parameter that we chose, just click on that income and drag drop into Excel. Again, we are working within the initial reports or the initial report that has been jumped or dropped into Excel for us. And we're going to continue to build off of it using JET functionality here. But you can see, we have those numbers populating the fields already, just based off of some of the criteria that we've selected here. Now, I can go in, I can make any modifications to these chart of accounts. If we wanted to include a range and exclusion, we can certainly modify these fields. If I want to begin structuring out this report, just so it's easy to uh, digest as a consumer, when it's received, I can come in here, I can create a total field or a total column. If I want to provide actuals, versus budgets, just a detail for my consumers what we're looking at, and then color that. Again, that's Excel functionality. None of that is being taken away from you today. But when I actually want to start building out the report from scratch, there's a couple of different things that we want to leverage immediately. One, we want to be able to take advantage of the global dimensions or segments that you have set up within your Dynamics instance today. So if I want to come in here and filter off the different dates, we certainly can, but here you can see I can start accessing different global dimensions so I can start slicing and dicing my data quickly. So I can slice off of different companies here. I can also come into my global dimension too and slice based off of company size. So let's just do medium sized business. We'll select that and hit run. And immediately out of the gate, I'm working with just medium sized detail. What we want to do is start building out this report. Okay. What I can do really quickly here is just start, apologies, just start with a date range just so we can see some net change over time. And now what I'm going to do is a simple end of month calculation that is native to Excel. This is not functionality and continue to build this report. We want to make sure that these dates are lining up correctly here. And what you're going to see me doing a lot of over the next 30 seconds here or so is copying and pasting over and driving this report based off of how I know how to leverage Excel today. Again, copy, and we're gonna paste this over so we can create, let's call it a, a rolling six months all the way into June. And we're gonna drive that detail in really quickly. That's how quickly we can go from the initial shell of a report to dragging and dropping six months of information that's relevant to us. Now, if I send this over to the CFO, and he or she says, no, thank you. There wasn't even a variance field calculated in here. Not a problem. That is an Excel calculation. We can come in here and we can simply identify the gaps. One second here. I like me. Didn't grab the fright date first. We can simply grab that information, drop it into Excel. Then we can get that variance calculation. And again, if we want to, we can come back in here. We can do some conditional formatting just to know where we're missing as a business. And then I can begin inserting that column in throughout the report. I'm going to grab column F. Place it in the column I. Do that pretty quickly. So this was financial reporting <clears throat> at a pretty high level here. So what we want to start tapping into 
is what if I want to start accessing information from different tables and fields? What if I want to build out an AP or AR report? That's what we're going to jump into next here. And the first thing that we'll kind of take a look at, what are the pre-built reports that we provide out of the box for you or that we can certainly focus on during the implementation, but everybody needs that account payable report. This is one that we provide out of the box. Again, we can help kind of design these reports for you. But the basic understanding here is that we can tap into every table and field. So this is our accounts payable report. We have our aging reports as well for receivables. And we can kind of scroll down. here. You can also see that we're leveraging multi-currencies as well. Now, that's something that we can certainly help you with during training, but I'm sure it's not foreign to you how we can operate with multi-currency within Excel, driving live dynamic detail. And again, this is not just to AP and AR. If we want to jump into some of the inventory reports, any data set that is residing within your instance today, build uh, with JET, and we can certainly help facilitate that, but we want you as the end user to be able to drive these reports and leverage a lot of the pre-built content that we give you out of the box. Now, if you want to build reports from scratch with AP, AR, detail, or really just any access, any new table or a new field that you guys have inserted, we're still going to come back to the JET ribbon here, but there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. So the first solution I can actually use as a Dynamics user is the browser tool. So the browser tool when to open up here, you can already see this is pretty user friendly. It tells us all the tables that we are working with within our Dynamics instance. And you can see here as I start filtering through other tables that it's showing me the associated fields. So I don't have to be an expert of the database. I just have to understand what data I need to access and what table is located. In. So if I was building a custom sales report, I can come in here, I can select customer, and I can see all of those different fields that make up that detail. And to build a report, very similar to Fast Financials, I can drag and drop into Excel. Now, that's one way to build a report is with the browser solution off those different tables and fields. The other way is with our report wizard. Now, report wizard is, again, this is specific to the Dynamics database. We want to be able to pull in all that information. So again, I simply am going to tell Jet what information or what table would I like to access. Here, we're going to build out a custom sales report. So we're going to access the sales table. And here's where we start adding what fields would we like to make up this custom sales report here. So again, just to kind of identify some of these parameters that I would like to drive the report, we can choose a number. We can include a name. We can include a state so we can see where some of these customers are deriving from. And then once we've identified the state, we can really start jumping into, we can do salesperson's code. So we can see what sales rep is associated with a particular account. Let's go to salesperson code. And we can also drive in total sales as well. So here on the right hand side, we have the selected fields. We can add filters within Excel, but how we're going to set up this report is we're going to make it easy for the consumer. So we're going to add it as a report option. And we're going to filter by state. Our sales reps or other users who can receive this report can interact with it pretty quickly. You can also add multiple filters within any given report here. We want to be able to set up how we're grouping this report based off the, the criteria that we've selected. We're going to make it simple. We're going to keep it as state. We can add sorting here, and we're going to do some of those sales totals, and we're going to go descending just so we can easily identify. We'll also include some sales totals as well just so we can get the dollar amount hard lined in there. Any formatting can be done with in Excel, or you can select some of the basic Excel formatting that we provide for you in the chat solution today. And then here we've just come to that finish window where I can select finish. And again, what you're going to see is the initial shell of the report that we can work with. I just have to go back up to that chat ribbon and I need to run the report. Okay. These are the report options that we've defined for end users to interact with. So I can filter by my information that's only relevant to me very quickly. 
I can run this report. And it's going to pull all of the information and the fields from the customer table that I've selected to work within. And you can see here, as I start scrolling, this is exactly what So we have a group state. We can see the salesperson's code. We can see the sales or dollar marks, dollar amounts that are associated with any given customer. And we can start drilling into that information and identifying uh, what is making up that dollar amount, what have they purchased, just so we can take a deeper dive into some of our, our customers. Now, you can see pretty quickly where this leads to. Again, this is just another dashboard that was made powering jet, jet reports, right? But also powering by Excel formulas and functions and dashboards that you guys can add to these reports. It's a very similar one that I just pulled about five seconds ago. We have salesperson information. We have sales from this year, last year, a variance calculation. We have quarter to date information. And we also have a little dashboard up at the top that shows us how dynamically we can work with this information. And we also have easy filters on the left hand side of over here. Okay. Next thing we will jump into is the jet hub. So let me click over to this screen really quickly here. And we're going to sign into the Jet Hub. But what I mentioned before is Jet Hub is the single destination for report management and end user consumption. And this comes with all licenses. Okay. So you can see here that uh, I have to use my same username and password or the same credentials uh, that I log in using Microsoft. I'll have to use for logging in with, uh, with Jet Reports today. And what you're going to see once we can get into Jet Hub pretty quickly here, or pretty slowly based off the way that we're looking at, um, we're going to have multiple different folders that we can work within or the reports that have been shared with us. And we're going to have a couple that we can select from. There we go. We have financial reports and sales reports that have been shared with us. So if I want to jump into the financial reports, here we see that we've been we've been given or shared with a PL by company, which is a consolidation report. And once I select it here, you're going to be able to see that I have some elements of reporting management. I have some basic information. Okay, so here I have when it was last updated, when it was last run, the run duration, by who, where is it pulling the information from, all information at a high level. But I can actually go in here as an end user and remember those report options. I can run these reports based off of what's only relevant for me based on what's shared with me. So a really easy way for users to be able to filter before they even run a report. So now, we always want to be able to share some of these reports with some of our other chat hub users so we can actually quickly access this user group information here and we can search people who are also within chat hub as well or we can share it with everybody and send it to send the report that we've created uh, with anybody within the Jet Hub. Again, if it accidentally gets sent to somebody that's not supposed to see AP detail, we know this is controlled and governed. Now, there also is an element of run history. I can see my run history. I can go back and I can actually see a what a report looked like six months ago, a year ago, depending on what I'm after here. So know that all of these versions or run histories are stored for your convenience and you can quickly access those reports. And that was timely version control, right? I can make sure I'm looking at the right version of the report. I can go in, I can look at previous versions. I can restore back to an older version so I can go in, I can make changes and I never have to worry about making modifications and not being able to recover an older version of a report. And then lastly here, most importantly, a way where you can schedule out these reports to land in a user's inbox or maybe just into the Jet Hub on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Okay, and that's what you're gonna be able to set up here. How often are we sending out these reports? Uh, when are we, do we want these reports to start being sent out? How many days, right? And what you'll be able to do is choose from the reports that you would like to send an email distribution is actually going to link up to your Outlook. So just because you're not a user or have a license of Jet doesn't mean you can't consume reports, all right? 
You can send these reports statically to a user in the field via an Excel document, a PDF, a CSV file, uh, however you choose that user can consume that information, but no, that's, it's static. So when they receive it, they can't drill down, they can't change parameters on the fly, and they certainly can interact with live detail. And that's something that we can jump into a little further as we continue to navigate who needs the license and who doesn't need a license. And that's something that we can facilitate based off a more uh, individualized setting. The last kind of subject that I would like to cover is JET analytics. So pardon me as I go back into my PowerPoint slide here. I'd like to introduce JET analytics to you guys. This is our full business intelligence and in analytics suite, which is what a majority of our JET customer base resides on. This is mainly because it provides an easy way to pull more complex reports, gives users and executives everything they want uh, from a visual analysis and dashboarding perspective. I also mentioned it before, we have a lot of our Dynamics customers who are navigating and migrating to different ERPs. So now if you're on GP today and you have a license and you transfer or migrate over to Business Central, you can take those licenses with you. But what analytics will allow you to do, it's going to allow you to not have to maintain that legacy database or house that information somewhere and continue to, to report off of it. We can actually house it in a database, okay? And that's what we define as reporting out of cubes, which we are actually gonna deliver to you. So again, the analytics solution is a business intelligence tool, which we define as reporting and dashboarding against a data warehouse in cubes. And a data warehouse in cubes is going to be a database that's optimized for reporting. And this is what we give in the analytics solution. If you don't know what those tables and fields, you don't understand how they connect, this is what you're going to leverage to be able to easily extract only the information that's relevant for you and really be able to power uh, a lot of the dashboarding and visual analytics that a lot of you are looking for. Okay, so let me quickly transition out of this slide real quickly and back to Excel, where again, we're going to be doing a lot of this reporting. So let me jump out of this. We're going to go into a new fresh workbook and we're going to go into the cubes here. Now, what you'll see is when I'm reporting against the cubes, you will see reporting gets a lot easier. I don't have those thousands of, I don't have those thousands of fields and tables that I pulled up with when I was interacting with uh, our report wizard or our browser solution, I'm just gonna have what we call measures and dimensions. And measures are just numerical values. So if I want to build a custom sales report off the sales cube that you saw me select, I can quickly come in here and I can identify sales. I can toss in a cost amount. I can include profit and profit percentage. Again, I have no idea how these tables and fields connect. We've done that for you through the analytics budget. Now, I can also identify a certain item. So if we wanna get a good idea of how item category is, is uh, performing for us, we simply select item category. And if we wanna see how it's been performing over time, we can add some date just to recognize some change over time. Now we could also build in a custom filter where I can toss in sell to customer state that gives me an easy way to begin filtering off of this different criteria okay we're just based off of this state now you can see here we've brought in this information awfully quickly with having no understanding of what the database looks like it's been set up for us already on the back end through our analytics solution and we're bringing in items we're bringing in sales over multiple years and we also have cost and profit sorry cost profit and profit percentage and again Profit and profit percentage are actually going to be calculated on the back end within our analytics solution, just in case that you calculate profit differently over different categories. That way, everybody is, is working with the single truth. Um, there's only one set of profit that could be uh, that could be calculated over bags and totes, right? So everybody's working with the same information. But if I want to start adding some slicers, we can go back into those global dimensions here. So if I want to be able to slice off a global dimension location, 
we can easily do that, drop it into Excel. We'll add a couple more here. If I want to see what item is performing best uh, and then more of a dashboarding approach, we can go into item category here, drop it into Excel. As we continue to go back in the pivot table, this is something that what you guys are going to be doing all on your own here. What's important for you? Is it the salesperson on a document so we can identify the users who are selling to these customers and how they're selling? And we can also include, again, some of these date ranges just to recognize maybe how we can filter out based off of different date ranges here. Now, this is something that is not foreign to you, but we are certainly not left Excel. But I can go in here, I can even add a chart, and I can quickly access that information. I'll exit out of this pivot table. I'll give you guys a better view here. And we're going to drag. We're going to drag and drop into Excel. And just as quickly as we were able to extract all of this information out of the database, nearly less time we were able to construct a dashboard based off of what we would visually like to see. So if I want to be able to filter off of Amsterdam, London, Los Angeles, and New York, based off of bags and totes, we can start identifying really quickly who some of these key sales representatives are how easy it is to build and create with the analytics solution. You can see here on a larger scale, this is a lot of the same information we just pulled. Let me kind of zoom in on this for you. But here we can see how we can start leveraging the global dimensions that have been set up for us within Excel, but also build off of Excel's functionality here today. Dashboarding approach, these are simple reports. Here we just pulled sales amount, profit, profit percentage, and here we just wanted to see how our sales reps were performing across multiple different um, item categories here. So that's how easy it is to build uh, with the analytics solution. The last thing that we'll kind of jump into here is how well we pair with Power BI, but we're going to take a couple different solutions here. So give me one second as I pull up my Power BI desktop. And we can start looking into how we work with Power BI by empowering the end user and building the data model for them. Now, Power BI is a great data visualization tool, and it's great at making complex data look pretty. So Microsoft, again, invested a lot of effort on that user experience onto the front end, and you can get really granular with the detail, but that's why we focused on the back end. So we can give the user the data model where they can actually build simply by selecting the information that's only relevant to them. So give me one second here as I kind of expand Power BI out so we can start working within the analytics solution and populating the cubes on the right-hand side in the fields where you'll see in a second. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is what it looks like if we're just using Power BI to leverage the SQL database all on its own. So if we're not using the analytic solution. So I'm going to go into my SQL server. We're going to type in the security credentials that allow me to interact with the SQL database. And we're going to try and start building out Power BI dashboards. I'm going to go into my demo environment and show you what my tables and fields and what the makeup looks like. This is what we're interacting with. All of these tables and fields, I have to understand how they connect, where they connect, why they connect so I can build out these reports. And if we don't understand that logic, right, then we can't build out these reports significantly well. Like we build the logic in for you, we connect it, and we make it only insert what is relevant for you. So let me go back to get data. We're going to access more this time. And what we're going to do here again, as we give it one second to kind of populate, to go get it from our SQL Server Analysis database. Now, this is what you guys will have access to once the analytics solution is populated for you. But we're going to type in those logger, those login credentials again. And what you're going to see here is now we have access to the same cubes that we had access to in the pivot table. I can come in here, I can select that same sales cube that we were working with them before, and you're going to see it populate on the right hand side here. And what you're going to see is how we can we leverage Power BI to build out these powerful dashboards that you are seeing, right? 
So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna build out that same kind of itemized or item category report based off some of the sales information. So we can quick, quickly grab item category here. We can build out that dashboard. We can drive it across a little further just so we can start making it good. We can go back, actually let's drop down this item real quick. It takes up a lot of space. We can come into sales again. We can scroll down. If we wanna understand who the salesperson on the document was, so how are these sales individuals performing on an individual basis? Let's select this one right here. And if we don't wanna take a look at that chart graph anymore, Power BI has multiple ways that we consume dashboards today. A really user-friendly, colorful way to interact with our sales representatives. So we can come back into sales again. We can select, let's choose posting date, just so we can get some kind of trending analysis over multiple different posting dates. So let's go to posting date. We'll include this information. And again, we want to see something different. Let's see some kind of trending analysis, fancy looking report. So good. We've included that. Something that's very popular for board members, CFOs, for VP of sales, they want these data driving KPIs. Okay. And this is something that everybody kind of wants to look, wants to look into. It's on my sales floor. It's a number that I constantly see so we can continue to improve. We can also include profit and we can turn that into a KPI as well, just by simply leveraging the cubes and the analytics of piece that we've installed for you. And then just as kind of the icing on the cake, if you're curious about how your customers are performing or how's your, how your sales representatives are performing, we can build a map out here. We can simply type in city select city here and we're going to get a nice visual dashboard our customers we can zoom in and we can see who's performing why they're performing well so what i can do here is i can select on an item and it's going to show me who makes up that amount when we are seeing some kind of trend across different different categories and now we can start diving into these numbers here with power bi again an easy way for you to build in these visual dashboards using the analytics solution and be able to filter off of the criteria that you want to work within. Now, what we'll do kind of really quickly here is we'll also kind of walk through a QA. and a um, If we have questions that are detailed, I'm certainly happy to take them offline here. We can discuss license types. We can take a look at pricing. We can facilitate those conversations with, a, with an excellent partner